Hello weirdos, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma Abe and I'm joined by our friendly baby. Today I'm going to be doing a very exciting video and that is my top 10 books of 2020. Now despite what 2020 has been the dumpster fire that it is, I had quite a pleasant reading year. I read like 152 books which exceeded the books that I was planning on reading. I was able to accomplish all my reading goals for the most part. I also was very lucky to read 25 books that got a five star rating um, for me personally. Now I'm not going through all 25 of those books because that would make this video endless. I attempted to narrow it down to the top 10, but I got to 12 and it was just like pulling teeth and I was just like, you know what, what if we just end it at 12 and call it a day? I think getting from 25 to 12 with the goal of getting to 10 is a pretty good like success rate. These are in no particular order because I hate picking favorites. I do not know how people do it, how they like rank them in order from like worst to best. I'm just, <laughs> I love things so much. So, um, let's get into it. Which one do we start with? So the first one I'm going to talk about is Solitary. And this is a book that I read for the booktube prize. And this was devastating. It tells the story of the man, um, of a man, the author, because it's a memoir. He was imprisoned in the 60s and he was like rightfully imprisoned. The crime he committed to get him, wound him up in prison. Like he admits like he did it. He, he was supposed to be in jail. However, while he was in jail, he was accused of a crime he didn't commit, which was killing a guard. And because of that, he spent 40 years in isolation and the book depicted like that time what it was like but also the fight for justice and the two other men who were also wrongfully imprisoned along with him and i read it just before june i read it a couple of months before then so already in my mind i was having these conversations and wrestling with like racism and in this country because it's a real thing um especially when it comes to the justice system like so captivating to read and hear his perspective and hear him talk about not just his experience but also his perspectives on things like racism and one of the aspects that i truly enjoyed is when he talked about becoming a black panther because he became a black panther during his time in incarceration and i loved hearing about the work that he tried to do to get his fellow inmates justice by like staging things like hunger strikes and organizing cell blocks in order to make things better for the prisoners and he truly attests that to his like to his membership within the black panther party i just i just loved his whole like orientation towards like the black panther party because i think especially like in like today black panthers get like a really bad rap which is undeserved i think they were fighting for their rights just the same way as the blm movement is doing today maybe doing things a little bit differently because the blm isn't escorting people to polling stations with guns but it's the same like idea i just really loved hearing his perspective on that so there you go that's the first book so the next book i do actually have a physical copy of but i lent it to a friend and they have not returned it to me and that would be say nothing this is a book about the troubles in northern ireland this is a subject that i didn't know a lot about but the way the author is able to tell these different stories across decades of time is quite quite like mar like just really awesome and again this is another book that i read for the booktube prize this one actually wound up winning the second place and yeah i thought it was a well deserved it was a really good book i read it fairly early on in february and when i read it it, it got second place oh she is so squirmy 
you follow a bunch of different people and their stories working with the IRA or having their lives being completely affected by the IRA it tells the story of like these two women who went on hunger strikes in order to try and get like some justice which ultimately like they almost died and it talked about this group of I want to say like seven or more siblings whose mom was murdered by IRA members and the crime went unsolved for decades yeah just lots of stories like that which is just so so interesting and there are times where the author gets really involved in it when they talk about their experiences doing investigations into like who committed some of these murders um it was just fascinating and this period of history that I didn't know a lot about and I feel like there's still so much more that I don't know about but I feel like now I can talk to my Irish friends a little bit better now that I kind of know like more about the conflicts it's mind-boggling today that in the 20th century there has been like this level of violence over it happening like within the Christian religion. I find it so interesting. I think of religious violence as something that happened like a hundred years ago, which isn't true. Like religious violence still happens today. Just look at kind of what's happening in the Muslim world. It's so much, so much conflict happening there. It's just weird for me to think about in like that way because it's something that I truly think about in terms of history. <laughs> this is something that happened like 200 years ago, if not more, but that is definitely not the case. This is stuff that's still happening today. The next book is The Heartbeat of Wounded Knee by David Furr. And oh my god, this is the book that, this is like everything that I wanted it to be because it tells like the story of like modern Native Americans, which is something that is so like just disregarded and their stories are just like never told, which is just so frustrating. There's a huge concept or just like idea that Native American history doesn't exist anymore because Native Americans don't exist, which is absolutely not true. It's a vibrant, breathing community and multiple communities that spread all over America and are learning to adapt to their environments in multiple, many different ways. Native Americans are some of the most resilient people out there. Hands down, I will fight you on this. And this book is really like a testament to that resiliency, but also being able to find like your own identity through this <laughs> massive generational trauma and genocide. And it just, I loved it. There's a, like a bit at the front that gives you like a quick rundown about different tribes in different areas and like their cultures to give you an idea, but then it expands upon that so much. And there's personal testimonies from both the author who is like a Native American um, and his family and other people. And it talks about like everything from like politics to art. And I ugh, <laughs> just loved it so much. The reason why the 1890, um, date is significant is because that is the year that Wounded Knee happened. <laughs> and Wounded Knee is often cited as, you know, the end of Native American history, which like just is not true. It's, it's awesome. And I love seeing history books like this. And I like, I remember seeing this in the store and not knowing anything about it and knowing I had to pick it up because it was going to be something that just attracted me so much and I'm so glad that I read this. I also read this for the booktube prize. Unfortunately, did not get as far as I would like it to have gone, but yes, truly an amazing piece of nonfiction writing and I want more books like this to exist because one thing that I've noticed in kind of like in like books in general, and especially books about Native Americans, is that fiction stuff is starting to get published. Um, or it's like stories about Native Americans, but I'm not seeing that at all, like in the nonfiction genre. There's not a lot of like these stories being told of works that like Native Americans like are doing. Like one thing I want to see is I want to like hear more 
about Native Americans' influence on American football. Because it's freaking huge. Like, literally all the rules that are in the rule book are freaking in there because of Native Americans and racism. Um, but it's... Like, Native Americans truly aren't given enough credit for the how they have shaped American culture as it exists today. I'm gonna get off my high horse and continue because we have more books to go through. The next book is another book, another nonfiction book. This is The Good Women of China by Xin Ran. This, the work that this author did was like marvelous. So this author like went to all of these different um, women and she interviewed all these different women. Um, she is from China originally and the stories that you hear about things like motherhood and what it means to be a woman at different points like in um history going through different disasters and having to deal with what it means to be a woman in so there are truly like just gut-wrenching stories that are told especially uh like stories like dealing with the earthquake that happened in Tangshan which I'm don't know my Chinese geography well enough to tell you exactly which province that is. But anyway, so the basis of this is that she had a radio show and like women would call in and tell like their stories and some women would write to her and send to her and basically be like, you're my last hope, like I need you. Can you like help tell my story or help me in some way? And some of these stories are just truly devastating and some of them are just completely like uplifting. So it's a wild emotional ride but i fucking loved it and it was so worth it next book next book would be born a crime this is the one i read i think the most recently and this is by trevor noah and i just found the experience of reading this book to be so enjoyable i think first of all trevor noah is funny so i really enjoyed like the humor that he brought in but I thought that he brought so much heart into this memoir that he didn't necessarily need to do. And it was just, it was so like emotional at some times, especially when he was talking about his relationship with his mom. It was funny. Like it just was such like a roller coaster. And I just love his perspectives on world events. I think they're very intelligent and put together and it brings a different perspective that we don't see a lot like in America especially when he talks about things like that he lived through like apartheid and what it was like growing up trying to like forge a relationship like with his father and with his friends and like with his siblings even though he was technically illegal <laughs> he wasn't supposed to exist I think his mom is a badass she like knew what she wanted and she knew how to get it and I think it's awesome and just hearing the stories that Trevor Noah like, got up to when he was a child and a teenager is very very funny so that's this one okay moving on to the next the next book I read and thoroughly enjoyed was Shanghai Free Taxi and this I read fairly early on in the year I just picked it up because I saw at at my universities that they had a copy I couldn't get an actual physical copy of it but I really enjoyed this the whole idea is that this reporter from America came and had this taxi that like free taxi service he'd drive you wherever you wanted in Shanghai and he just talked to people he talked to people in Shanghai and I loved it because you've got just so many perspectives and nuances about like what the Chinese people think um, that you just don't see. And one thing that I just found so incredibly frustrating since I like returned from China is just that like people just think like just so narrow mindedly about like China. They think it's kind of like a monolith and that's just absolutely like not what it's like. I fell in love with China when I went. Just the book that I needed at the time and at the time I was gearing up for what I thought would be a pretty fun summer in 2020 and whew, no it was not that oh my god this book just I loved 
the way that it discussed like politics it was really able to explain to an american audience like specifically kind of like what the thoughts are going on behind like some of these people's like thoughts and emotions towards different things. The next book is Pea Girl of Hummingbird Lane. Uh, this is the first fiction book that's appearing on this list. There's not a lot. Um, that's because I don't read a whole ton of fiction, but this book just holds a very like special like place in my heart because of where it's set. So it's set in Yunnan, China, and which is <laughs> like like a fairly like large um province in china but space wise and it's where tea is grown like a lot of the world's tea is grown in yunnan and it's beautiful it's breathtaking i want to go there so bad one day like oh my god i have just this connection with yunnan and i like it just was an unexpected like place for like this book to take place I wasn't expecting and I loved it you follow this young woman who finds herself pregnant and what she does to try and be like a good mother to this chi child which essentially is to give this child up for adoption in a in a in an in a illegal way and what she does to try and get back to her child and it also visits briefly um throughout like the child's life because the child goes to america and is adopted by an american family like the relationships again between mothers and daughters in this story is really intense and yes i wanted it to be a little bit longer because i wanted like another chapter where we really get to explore like the building of those relationships again i really love the way lisa c writes culture into her stories because you just really get immersed into it and i loved it and i love tea and so <laughs> there you go it was just again really dark at times like oh my god the tiger mauling scene is intense but also just such tender moments of like sacrifice and love and motherly love and motherly daughterly love um i loved it can you tell that there's a theme? I don't think you can. There's no theme. The next book I read is, um, Need I Say More? If you've not read this, what are you doing? Read this yesterday. <laughs> this tells a story of Chanel Miller and her quest to get justice, um, and failing at getting justice for her rape. It's a very famous trial she's known as emily dell hence why it's called know my name because you should know her name and holy crap the emotions that she is able to pointedly put on page to explicitly express what she is going through and what a lot of women go through through just simple things like catcalling is so like illuminating i was just like as i was reading it i was like yes like this is exactly describing like how like i felt at different points in my life and i just want people to read it and it's like things that i've not been able to express with my own words she just brings it to life she's an amazing an amazing author i can't wait to like, see what she does next if she writes anything else um i read this for the booktube prize and holy crap i'm so glad i read this and it, it won the booktube prize in the non-fiction category well deserved in my opinion um yeah very difficult book to read extremely triggering so if you're all triggered at, by things like sexual assault or rape don't read this book it's very very graphic there's like no details no rock that she doesn't leave unturned but that's a uh, part of like what makes this book so good it's exhausting it's draining to read but so worth it I i'm not the only person who's singing its praises the next book is Thousand Splendid Sons by Khalid Husseini. I did not expect to love this book as much as I did going into it. This is the other fiction book that I read. Holy crap, I didn't know anything going into this book. And the way the author writes is just so beautiful. The way that he's able to 
talk about like these women finding a family in an extremely like abusive situation and dealing with all of this political turmoil in Afghanistan. Depictions of grief like really get me and towards the end there's just a depiction of like this young girl like going through like how she was dealing with the grief. Um, I'm not going to spoil anything and it it got me. It got me. I did something very similar when I went through a very intense period of grief when I was a little younger than like the girl in the book and it it got me. I cried. I cried. Holy fucking shit. Like this book like just it hurt to read. This again very very difficult book to read but also so so good. Like what both of these women that you follow go through is so intense and again I didn't know anything going into it so know this. It's about, about two women who managed to find a family. I can't find words to describe these books because they're so good. We got three more left. We can do this. So the next book I read is Sea People and I just love this. It tells like the history of Polynesia and it does a really like awesome thing because it not only like talks about the history and like how we know the history and like some some of the historiography that has gone behind like the making of the history but it also tells it from like different perspectives so you kind of get the idea of like what the westerners and like the white people were interpreting things as and then it also tells the story of like what the indigenous people and the polynesians ha have done to like preserve their history and like what history was from like their perspective but also goes into like more like modern day talking about like current historians or what current Polynesians are doing to tell their own stories which is interesting because this book is written by a white woman but you can tell the reverence and the love that she has for these people in this culture her husband is a Polynesian it was so just beautiful and it, I love books like this I love books that just explore a culture and a history of a culture and many different cultures because oh my gosh Polynesia is so diverse it really can't be like viewed as a monolith either and that is discussed and it was so interesting to hear about navigating techniques because it's so different from what people in the west would like assume. I also read this for the booktube prize and it also did not get as far as I would want it to. I get it, it's a very niche thing. I really really love books like that. I was watching a book Olive and this was on her list too for that she read this year. It was her number 10 book because she ranks them because she can do that. I can't. And I was like yes it was a fucking amazing book. Anyway that's just me. So the next book is Dear Girls and this is written by Ali Wong and first of all I think Ali Wong is a very very funny comedian and I like her comedy. Kind of makes sense like why I would like this book. I read this because it won the Goodreads Choice Award for humor uh, in 2019. <laughs> I loved it. I love her comedy style and that's what I think led me to love this book so much but also like kind of similar to what Trevor Noah did she brought so much heart into this book that she just didn't need to do and you can tell it's like a love letter written towards her daughters and that is just so so wonderful to to see the amount of love and like the wisdom that like she is imparting to her girls that we just kind of get to sit on the sidelines and see and the level of details that she goes into some of the kids like really personal at times it's just great and the way that she talks about dealing with very difficult things like miscarriage and your own identity and finding your identity i loved it i'm very easy to please <laughs> holy crap and the last book that i'm going to talk about is the only plane in the sky this boy i've talked about this book a lot i loved it i thought it was very powerful it almost made me cry i think it's the first time i read that yeah i read this twice this year I think that if the first time I read it, if I wasn't in the car with my dad, I would have been bawling my eyes out. I think if I, if I was alone in my room, like in my bedroom, just curled under my blankets, I would just be sobbing. It's a collection of oral histories depicting what the day and the days after 
were like. First of all, the read it with audiobook and following along because you get the actual like audio of certain calls that were happening. The voice actors did such a good job. It is gut-wrenching. Such a great immortalization of what that, that day was like for people and for people like me who don't remember. It was a very like important book to read and I read this in very early in January and uh, before the world went to shit in 2020. This is like one of the few books that I've been pushing on like people to read uh, because it's just so good. Trigger warnings galore. I think it doesn't try to be anything more than what it is which is just a telling of the day what it was like for people living it. It doesn't seek to say the why or the how and it doesn't need to. There are just so many like images from this book that like stick in my mind. Just the, the discussions about the people going down the staircases, like seeing the bodies fall. Like holy crap that with that imagery it's just truly just like m like spine tingling. All these little stories that are mortalized like in this book it's a lot like it's good give it a shot i really loved it i read this also for the booktube prize yeah yeah i'm so glad i read it and yeah i picked it up after i read it the first time because it was just that good there you go those are my favorite books that i read in 2020 um all 12 of them i hope that 2021 is a better year and a really good reading year for me also. Reading spin start because I started with a monster, which I should not have started with a massive book. I'm gonna let you guys go now. Baby and I are gonna snuggle. Is that right? Are we going to snuggle while we read? She doesn't like it when I read because it takes attention away from her. Isn't that right? All right, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you liked the books that I read. Um, what are some of your favorite books that you read in 2020? All right, goodbye. <laughs>